This week we will do an experiment on work and energy. Two weeks ago we used Newton's second law to obtain coefficients of sliding and rolling friction for the cart and the block on an incline. This week we will use concept of work and energy to obtain these coefficients. In this experiment we will look at the relationship between the change in mechanical energy of a system and the work done by non-conservative force. When we lift a box at home or we push a cart in a store, we do work. The work done by a constant force is given by this equation F is equal, it's a dot product between force vector and uh, displacement vector which is equal to F R cosine theta. F here is the magnitude of the force applied to an object, R is the displacement of the object, and angle theta is the angle between the force and the line of displacement. Note that work is a product of two magnitudes, and for this reason it is a scalar. The unit for the work is a joule by a UK physicist James Prescott joule. One joule is equal to Newton times meter. The work can be positive or negative depending on the angle theta. If a force or a component of it is in the direction of the displacement, the work done on the object will be positive. If the force acts in the opposite direction of the displacement, then the work done by the force will be negative. What do you think will happen if the force is perpendicular to the displacement? Well, let's look at the equation. So the total work done on the object is equal to force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between two of those. If the angle between force and the line of displacement is 90 degrees, then the total work done on the system will be zero because cosine of 90 is equal to zero. If we have a system where two or more forces act on it, the total work done is the sum of the work done by each individual force. Now let's talk about kinetic energy and work energy theorem. In general, the kinetic energy of the object is the energy due to its motion. It is defined by equation k is equal 1 half mv squared. We measure kinetic energy in joules, same as work, and both work and energy are scalars. Unlike work, kinetic energy is never negative, instead it is always greater than zero or equal to zero, and it's independent on the direction of motion or the direction of any forces. According to the work energy theorem, the total work done on the system is equal to the change in kinetic energy. We will use an example of object falling down through air to derive work energy theorem. The two forces acting on object are gravity and average force of air resistance. The total force acting on the object gives it a constant downward acceleration of the magnitude A is equal F total divided by M. Since the total force is downward and the motion is downward, the work done by the object is positive. Suppose that the initial speed of the object is vi, and after falling a distance d, its speed increases to vf. Since object falls with constant acceleration, we can use constant acceleration kinematic equation, which states that v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a times d, where a is acceleration and d is the di vertical displacement. By rearranging terms in this equation, we can write that 2ad is equal v final squared minus v initial squared. Plugging in the value for acceleration to this equation, we get this, and then multiplying this equation by m divided by 2, we get that f total times d is equal 1 half mass velocity final squared minus 1 half mass velocity initial squared. We know from the definition of work that force times displacement gives a total work done on the system that is equal to 1 half 
mass velocity final squared minus one half mass velocity initial squared. The first term in this equation gives you final kinetic energy. The second term in the equation gives you a initial kinetic energy. And we know that the change in kinetic energy is equal to kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. Now, when we are done deriving the work energy theorem, let's talk about the sign of the work. We already stated that the total work done on the system is equal to the change in kinetic energy due to the work energy theorem. The work will be positive if the velocity of the system is increasing. If the velocity of the system is decreasing, the total work done on the system would be negative. The reason for this is because V final would be equal to V initial, which means that the initial kinetic energy would be equal to the final kinetic energy and then change in kinetic energy would be zero. When an object has a vertical displacement, gravity does work on it. The amount of work done by gravity is related to the change in potential energy of the object through this equation. The work done by gravity is equal to the negative change in potential energy. If we drop a book from some height y to a surface of the table and then we decide to analyze the potential energy for this book midair, we know that the potential energy for the initial position is equal mg times the height y initial and then in midair the potential energy would be mg times the uh, final height yf. So now the change in potential energy would be the potential energy at this point minus the potential energy at this point. And the equation is given by delta u is equal mg delta y, where delta y is the vertical displacement of the object. This relationship shows that an object gains a potential energy if the height increases and also the object will lose potential energy if the height decreases. So if delta y decreases, change in potential energy will be less than zero. If, for example, book is sitting on the surface of the table, delta y is not changing, so then the change in potential energy is going to be equal to zero. The mechanical energy of a system is the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energies. If only a conservative forces act on the system, mechanical energy is constant, and this means that change in kinetic energy is equal to the negative change in potential energy. If, on the other hand, we have a non-conservative force acting on the system, then uh, delta K will not be equal to negative change in potential energy. Change in kinetic energy and change in, pot in potential energy will give us a work done by this non-conservative force. The example for conservative force is a gravitational force and then example for non-conservative force is a force due to friction. Now let's talk about the system that we will use for this experiment. The system is entirely the same as two weeks ago when you used Newton's second law equations to determine coefficients of friction for the cart and block on the incline. So you're going to have a cart or block on the incline. The angle of inclination is theta. That's connected via this pulley here by a thread to a small falling mass m. Same as before, first you're going to draw a free body diagram. You will draw all the forces acting on the falling mass m and on the big mass m on the incline. First, we will write the equation for the change in kinetic energy for the system. You remember from last week, since these two objects are connected by a thread, they will have exactly the same acceleration. This means that also these two objects at the different periods of time will have the same velocity. So then we can write that the change in kinetic energy is going to be equal to one half sum of the masses of the falling mass and object on the incline times velocity final squared minus velocity initial squared. 
the change in kinetic energy for our system is going to be positive and the reason for that is because the system accelerates as you already determined two weeks ago. Now we will write a work done by gravity on the system. Let's start with the big block M here. The system is moving in this direction and the force that will create work done by gravity is the gravitational force and then the component of the force is this vector here, it's mg sine theta. So we will have mg sine theta times delta x would be our displacement since we are going to keep this as an x-axis times the cosine of the angle between the displacement and the force. The angle between the displacement and the force because they are in opposite directions is 180 degrees. For the small mass m here the work done by gravity is going to simply be gravitational force mg times the displacement delta x. Now this may be a little bit confusing here because we are using this direction to be x direction and this direction to be x direction. The reason for that is because these two objects are connected by this thread. So as much as this object moves, that much this object moves. So that's the reason we use delta x in both parts of this equation. Knowing that cosine of 180 degrees is a negative one, we can rewrite this equation in following way, work done by gravity is equal negative mg sine theta delta x plus mg delta x. From the definition of the work done by gravity, we know that the change in potential energy is going to be equal to the negative work done by gravity and vice versa, work done by gravity is equal to the negative change in potential energy we can write a term for the change in potential energy in the following way mg sine theta delta x minus mg delta x. The change in potential energy for our system would be a negative. The reason for that is this cart or block on the incline is slowly gaining potential energy and the falling mass m is losing potential energy. But since this angle of inclination is really small, the falling mass is faster losing potential energy than this object gains the potential energy. If there is a non-conservative force acting on our system, the work done by that non-conservative force is going to be equal to the sum of the change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy. The non-conservative force that acts on our system is a friction force. Now work done by friction force is going to be less than zero. The reason for that is because the friction force points in the opposite direction from the displacement. So from the definition work done by friction is going to be a friction force times the displacement delta x times the cosine of the angle between the friction force and displacement and that is equal to negative f dx. We know from the definition of the friction force that it is equal to the coefficient of friction times mg cosine angle theta. Substituting that back to this equation, we are going to get the equation for the work done by friction. And then, since we already can calculate the work done by friction using the change in kinetic energy and change in potential energy, we can use this information to calculate a coefficient of friction, which is going to be equal to the negative work done by friction divided by mg cosine theta delta x. At this point, you have all the information needed to complete this week's experiment. Next is a demo on data collection and data analysis for the work energy experiment. This week's setup is same as during the week when you did the second Newton law. So you have the uh, dynamic track. You have a wooden block here that's placed below the front feet to create an inclination. 
you have a wooden block here and you have a cart you have a mass hanger you have two 20 gram masses and one 10 gram mass first I will guide you through a steps of taking the data and then I will go ahead and show you how to analyze the data so the first what you're going to do is you have to use the electronic balance in the lab and measure the mass of the wooden block and measure the mass of the cart. To place your cart on the uh, table or on the electronic balance, you have to put it upside down so it doesn't go off the table. So once you're done with taking the mass of the cart and the block, you're going to measure the angle of inclination. Record that down. So first we are going to uh, record the position and velocity for the cart. So place it on the uh, track. You remember from last time the thread has to go across the smart pulley and then PhotoGate is used to record the data through the science workshop. Okay, so make sure in order to record the data the thread goes across the pulley and thread goes straight like this you shouldn't guide it through these holes another thing you have to notice is the thread on the card has to be connected to this back screw so the thread is straight okay now you're going to add the mass of 30 grams to the mass hanger so your falling mass is going to be 30 plus 5 is 35 grams. Okay, and now you are ready to take the data. So simply with your partner, on the same time when you press the start on the computer, you are going to release the cart and then stop when the cart comes to the end. Now you can move on to taking, to record the data for the um, wooden block. Place the wooden block on the track, so this felted side is on the bottom. You have to make sure also that, so thread goes across this pulley and it should be straight. So I notice some of the students are guiding this thread through these holes around. No, just lay it straight across this first pulley. So now your hanging mass is going to be 50 plus 5 is 55 grams. Now let's take the data again. And I stopped. Once you're done, return the masses here and then return wooden block and the cart on the uh, air truck. Now we will move on to a data analysis. First you can check if the velocity versus time graph looks as a straight line. So simply drag run number one to a graph, drop it, it looks like a straight line. Neglect these last points here because I didn't stop on time. Now take run number 3 to the same graph and it also looks as a straight line. Before you start recording initial position and velocity and final position and velocity for the cart and the block, you need to label your runs so you know which one corresponds to cart and which one corresponds to a block. So simply click here to change the file name. My run number 1 was cart, so I'm just going to change the name and then click one more enter and then my run number three was a block click enter and then enter one more time so now you have a red line here representing a cart purple line is a velocity for a block as a function of time but for the data analysis for the work energy experiment you have to plot a velocity versus position so to do this you're going to bring your mouse down where it says time once the mouse changes 
like this to and then choose a position. So now you have a velocity versus position for the cart and for the block. Next thing you're going to highlight cart here then choose the uh, smart tool bring it back and then we are going to uh, record the value for initial position and initial velocity. Um, try to avoid the data points that are on the beginning and the data points on the end. I just scaled the graph here so I can see the whole graph. I'm going to show you a trick. So you choose x initial and x final for the block and for the cart to be same. So your delta x is constant during the experiment, which makes the calculation for the kinetic energy, potential energy, and coefficient of friction much easier. So now highlight here uh, where it says block. Click on it. Once, once it is highlighted, choose a smart tooler again. And now bring this smart tool here to the line. So once these numbers change the color, you can record the initial position, initial velocity for the cart and for the block. And then choose the final position and velocity for block and for the cart by moving the smart tool here close to the end. Do not choose endpoints and then move. this one here, so then you're going to record the final position and final velocity for the block and final position and final velocity for the cart. The units for velocity here are meters per second and then units for position are meters. Once you're done, you can turn off this smart tools and then you're going to change the name of your graph, write your names and then go to a file and then print graph and you're going to print for each member of your group one copy of the graph. Now when you have a hanging mass for block and for the cart, you have the mass of the block and the cart, you have initial and final positions and velocities for both block and the cart, you're going to use this data and calculate the change in kinetic energy change in potential energy and you're going to calculate work done by friction. Once you have the work done by friction you can go ahead and calculate coefficients of friction for the cart and for the block. At this point you have all the information necessary to complete this week's experiment. Once you're done please close the data studio and log out of the student account. This is all for this week. Thank you.